and uh, we will never forgive him for his traitorous act, and so we will always make sure to eliminate Beheshtur wherever he may go. Hello reformers and welcome back to Warband Native. Now when we left off we had a whole bunch of vassals helping us out in uh, eliminating more of the Vagir's territory. And uh, well, they're actually doing a spectacular job. I cannot commend them enough at the moment. Anyway, I'm gonna continue increasing some stats here. I'm not entirely sure what I really should go for at the moment. Because, uh, I don't know. I personally feel like maybe increasing our strength and then just going for some additional power draw or something like that. I think maybe we should also just go for a little bit more in athletics. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, it's kind of difficult at this point for me to actually decide what to go for because I don't really have any clear thing that I want to do with the exception of getting that 7 in leadership, even though it's not really necessary at the moment. Anyway, we're done, we're ready, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to take you Yoruma Castle, which only has 51 in here, and I was thinking of auto-resolving, but then I thought to myself, do I really want to run the risk of just losing more units than I have to lose? And uh, I didn't I didn't really want to do that, to be honest. I would very much prefer not to lose that many. And uh, hilariously enough, saying that, we're probably now going to lose over 600 units. No, we're not. We won't lose over 600 units. But maybe something similar to that. Hopefully not. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to estimate that we will probably lose. Let's see here. Maybe about 50 units in this particular engagement. I'm hopeful that it's not going to be that much, but you never know. I mean, it's the Vagiers and it's the, the Marksmen, you know, the Marksmen are extremely effective, very, very accurate at what they do, and you can already see here that they are attempting to focus me down, which is not great. That's kind of rude, isn't it? It's kind of rude, but obviously that's just how it is. That's just how they are, and hopefully I'm not gonna get shot by that guy. Whoa, that was close. That was very, very close indeed. I thought to myself, I'm, I'm going to die, or I'm going to take a lot of damage from that guy, but no. Apparently I was able to get a, a, a bit of a one-up on him, so that's pretty good. Maybe I'm able to take out that fellow as well. Yes, that's nice. We're using the wonderful curvature of the shot to just get a little bit of an advantage in the angles that I'm able to shoot from here. Because obviously the arrow is not going to travel completely straight. So you do need to watch out for that. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, no, a little bit more. Ah, eh, oh, he moved right at the end. Kind of. There we go, we got him. Phew. Okay, so yeah, we've already lost... Actually, we've already lost about 40 units, so that's not very good. My estimate is quickly running away with itself. And I'm very much hoping that we are not going to lose any more units, especially my own units. As you can see, I've lost, uh, I've lost about six, but they, uh, well, two of them have only died, so that's not too bad. I, I'd say that ratio is pretty good, decent enough, I suppose. I would like to get a new bow, personally. I feel like my bow at the moment is, I, I think it's pretty good, but I would like to get something that can one-shot with headshots, because at the moment it's not actually doing that. I'm not actually capable of getting headshots and then killing someone instantly. So I would very much appreciate a bit of a... Maybe a longbow? Strong longbow or something like that? Maybe maybe something like that would, would help us out. And we're actually... Wow. We've actually lost all of our reinforcements. Well, not all of the reinforcements, you know what I mean. We lost basically every single person we came in here with in the initial charge, which is... Not great. That is kind of an understatement, because it's kind of awful. Ah. ah. Okay, I actually thought that I was covered. I really did think that I was covered there, but apparently not. Apparently not. Okay, well, we eliminated 40... Uh, yeah, that's what I find so annoying about native, actually, at times. Because you take out basically the entire garrison, and you get killed by one of the last units, and then the siege ends and nothing happens. So I'm just going to tell them to surrender because they will do that now and we're just going to take a whole bunch of units here and we'll see what we can do 
about leveling those up as quickly as we can. We've done that in the past, and uh, that's it. There we go. How is my uh, how is my food doing at the moment? Actually, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so I'm going to give this to Lord Druli, I guess, because he's having a couple of difficulties with his relation with us at the moment. I mean, it's not getting that low, but I don't really want it to get exceedingly low so that he actually has a risk of leaving us at some point, which would be awful. Anyway, as you can see, we don't have that much food. So I guess I guess we could head to Kuro. I mean, I'm very surprised that we were still able to even take that. I did not participate in it at all. And uh, it's just very strange. Kind of weird. Oh, well, never mind. We are going to buy some things and then move on easily enough okay so here is the thing we can either go for beluga castle which i think is a siege tower and that's the reason why i kind of left it alone for the moment or we can decide to go for river Chegg, which is going to be a crazy feat so i'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to do it but we do have a whole bunch of vassals with us so it might make sense for us to do that right now Let's actually just take a quick look here. Urumuda doesn't have that many. They actually lost quite a few units in that particular siege, which I'm not very happy with, but I guess we'll we'll just take them anyway and we'll see what we can do. But yeah, otherwise, we just want to take out this guy here. He is all by himself, and it's going to be easy enough to eliminate him. And he only has 44 on the battlefield after all, and we have a whole bunch of cavalry. Yeah, we actually have 24 cavalry, which is pretty good. I think we're just going to charge in. It's been a while since we've actually just, you know, charged in with reckless abandon. It's been a while since we've done that, so it would be quite nice to, uh, you know, have a little bit of action, you know, instead of me doing sieges and everything, you know, so this is actually quite refreshing and uh, it should be quite refreshing considering it's very very cold in the snowy regions so yeah we're obviously going to be wrapping up warmly uh, yeah not really I guess because I mean we're, we're, we're just gonna worry about our our uh, armaments I guess and making sure that we are as protected as possible against various archers <laughs> Ah, oh, these archers. I can imagine if we're going to go into Rivercheg in a second, which I might do. It depends how quickly our vassals are able to kind of recuperate themselves. Because if they're not able to recuperate themselves as quickly as maybe we would need them to, then I think we're going to have some difficulties. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll be able to do it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not going to take any loot. Thank you very much. And otherwise... Let's go, I guess. Let's actually just take a quick look at Beluga Castle and we'll see how it's going over there. Because maybe it's going to be good enough. Oh, there is actually another vassal around here, but I don't exactly know whether I really want to do another field battle right now when we are so close to eliminating the Vegas once and for all. So let's just take a quick look. Is it only 18? Oh, we already took this, actually. Yeah, I seem to remember that we already took this. And then King Yaroglek came back here, or some of one of their vassals came back here and decided to take it. So I guess we're just going to threaten them. Oh, and I should have taken those sea raiders. My bad. Oh, uh, well, never mind. Okay, so I guess I'm going to give this to uh, this fellow. He's actually already maxed out. Okay, so Akadan, Druli, and Garmal are having problems. Hmm, that's not very good. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. I'm going to just wait here for a little bit. Maybe we'll see if any vassals decide to turn up here. We are all perfectly back to full HP in my army, with the exception of a couple of companions. Lord Talbar was just defeated in battle, which is not very good. But I was hopeful that maybe we could get someone with a huge, huge army to come over here and assist us. But it doesn't seem like that is the case. Aha! Traitorous! Traitorous dog is over here. Aha! Yes, we must eliminate the scoundrel as quickly as possible. Yes, we must hunt him down to the ends of the earth. He will never escape us, because if you don't recall, in this series, we had a companion by the name of Beheshtur. And uh, when we created our faction for the first time, I decided, uh, maybe against, <laughs> against better judgment perhaps, to provide a fief 
and indeed create a vassal by the name of Beheshter. So his name is obviously Lord Beheshter or something along those lines. And he decided to defect at some point, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the process of us attaining lordship and indeed kingship. And uh, then he, yeah, he decided to uh, take some fiefs with him. And uh, we will never forgive him for his traitorous act. And so we will always make sure to eliminate Beheshter wherever he may go. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that is going to mean that he will get the, get the, get the point, you know? He'll get the hint that uh, that was not a good idea. It was not a good idea to leave the Kingdom of Reformia, yes. But you can see here that he has some rather irritating units. Just like him, he's rather irritating in himself because obviously he does tend to take fiefs with him when he defects. I, I actually haven't really experienced that that much. And I think the only time that we've really been hit hard by that has been in this series, as well as in the Blood and Steel series. Because uh, I think one time we had a vassal take, I think, four or five fiefs. Maybe I'm remembering incorrectly, but I seem to remember that there was a vassal that did have a pretty big impact in that regard so anyway there you go we were able to eliminate him once more and uh, I suppose this is the last one this is the last one that they have we've eliminated everyone this is kind of hilarious actually that this is basically coming full circle because if you've seen my original series in Warband Native then you will know that we left the Rodox until last, because they're just exceptional at what they do. They're very good at defense. And, uh, well, it's going to be kind of hellish to fight them again. But we're going to see how it goes. So let's see how many they have here. They don't even have that many. The main problem is that they have 84 Vagia Marksmen. It's going to be very, very hard. Let's try it. It's a siege tower as well. Wow. Okay, I don't exactly know how we're going to do this. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to send a message to everyone that we don't need them anymore, and then I'm going to say that we should do another campaign, and hopefully we're going to get more vassals to appear. And actually, if King Yaraglek... Blah, blah, blah. Yes, if I could speak. If King Yaraglek actually decides to come out here... Oh, there we go. We did actually get another person. Lord Trimbao. He doesn't have too many people coming with him, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, it's okay. 57 is a decent enough number, and uh, yeah, otherwise, if you, King Yarig, like decides to come out here, that's absolutely fine. I really don't mind fighting him, even if he has 100, 150 units or something like that. I'm hopeful that I might be able to attract one more of our vassals. It's going to take a long time for them to get up here, though, from Saranid territory, so I don't exactly know whether it's a good idea for me to wait any longer. Oh my! Yeah, it is. It's a great idea for me to wait a little bit longer. All right, let's do it. Let's construct our siege tower. Lord Druli is coming with an almighty army of 320 units. And really, I would not have expected him to bring that many, but I guess we've awarded him a n number of pretty decent fiefs, so I guess it only stands to reason that he would be able to field a much larger army than most of his peers, and I probably need to do something about that by awarding, you know, extra fiefs to other people, but yeah, Druli is just a, a fantastic, fantastic vassal. He's actually an old Vagir vassal by the looks of things, so this is going to be a little bit of revenge on his part against King Yaraglek for indicting him originally, of course. All right, so we do actually have a battle advantage, which is hilarious in itself because I wasn't expecting that. Let's see if we can do a little bit of damage here with our archers while we move the siege tower to the walls. There we go, there's a skirmisher. Bear in mind that we're probably not going to be getting any enemy units that are actually capable of dealing any damage to us, that much damage at the moment, because bear in mind that the spawn order for the Vagia Marksman is quite low. They're actually quite low in the list, so it might take them some time to spawn in here, which is probably going to be the greatest advantage that we will have so far, because if we 
would allow them to spawn in here and be actually be on the battlements as we move the siege tower towards the walls, we're going to be in a whole load of pain. And uh, hopefully that's not going to be the case. Hopefully we're just going to have a whole bunch of skirmishers firing at us and Nord Huntsmen and all kinds of relatively poor units in regards to their ranged capability. But who knows? Maybe it's going to be... Uh, doomsday a little bit earlier on than we would think but we'll see there we go all right so thankfully the siege tower it doesn't take too long to get to the walls here I'm I'm actually kind of pleased about that let's tell our archers to kind of stand outside here as well because we don't really want them getting in melee immediately because they're probably not going to do the most spectacular job of things there is actually another archer over here, so I'm going to try and... Oh, I don't have any more... I don't have any more arrows? Oh, uh, yeah, I actually forgot about that. Great. Probably should have kept a couple, just in case. But hopefully we'll be able to penetrate their defenses quicker and sooner rather than later, because otherwise we are going to be in real big trouble. I don't exactly know whether we're going to be able to do this. Jeremus is getting a couple of kills. Nice. Good, good work. Good job. Go, go, Jeremus. Go, go, Gadget, Jeremus. Yeah, I don't know whether that's really going to work. That's probably not going to work with him, is it? He doesn't have extendable limbs or anything like that. And he doesn't have a nice little propeller that comes out of his hat, either. But yes, anyway. Ah, uh, I'm a bit worried. This does not look to be going too well. It's actually kind of weird, because they don't seem to have that many good units at the front here anyway. So it's kind of strange that we are having such difficulties getting inside. Oh, there we go, there we go. They're moving away. This is fantastic. This is the greatest thing that they could possibly do for us. Can you please get in there? Come on, Kurgit Horseman. Move in there. Yes. Get in. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay. We're getting inside. This is fantastic. But maybe not so fantastic because now I'm in by myself oh dear well this is the best I could do this is the best I could do can't really wait for any for any of our allies to actually enter because otherwise we're just gonna be stuck outside there in the bottleneck for almost an eternity so that would not be great let's just try and do as much damage as we can yeah there we go okay Take out them, and them, and them. Yes, there we go, there we go. Nice. Okay, so this is going quite well. This is going quite well. Me saying that has just jinxed me, so I'm just mark my words that I'm probably going to die within the next two minutes. <laughs> probably. But it depends. It depends very greatly on whether the reinforcements come in and try to trap me. Yes, as you can see right here. Got to be a bit careful. I was hopeful that I would be able to give my units a little bit of a jump start there and maybe get them inside a little bit quicker, but that seems not to be the case. Amusingly enough, I'm actually kind of surprised that they did not decide to make a move, so to speak. And I'm actually going to try and eliminate a couple of their archers here, because bear in mind that the Vagia marksmen are going to start to spawn in. As you can see, there's one right there. Going to try and use the wall to my advantage. We've got to make sure that the line of sight is in our favor. Okay, we're just going to have to be a little bit careful with taking, uh, taking this exceedingly annoying damage that they're able to deal. And bear in mind that some of these Vagia units actually do come with blunt weapons, which makes things even more difficult for us. And taking two damage here, two damage there, it's eventually going to take its toll. So it's really not something that you want to take too much of, obviously. But I'm apparently just getting outclassed by a whole bunch of Vajir archers. That's kind of sad, isn't it? That is kind of sad. Anyway, yeah, we have eliminated 127? Really? Only 127? That is absolutely awful. Oh, we killed Yank King Yaraglek. That's fantastic. That's really good, but I have a bad feeling about this. There's a really, really bad feeling in the air right now. And the bad feeling is that I'm going to die as soon as their reinforcements sworn in. I'm going to have to take a very, very beady eye, a keen eye on the... Never mind. Yes, never mind. Uh, yes, I was going to say, we have to keep a very close eye on the 
log here to make sure that we know exactly when the reinforcements are going to be coming in. But then I got eliminated by a glancing blow. And uh, actually, we didn't even do that badly. You can see here that our casualties, our allied casualties, were not that much. We only lost 16 total in terms of losing them to death, that is. And then we only lost one, one Kurgit Lancer of our own unit, and we killed 150. So I'd say that that was pretty successful for the most part. And you can see here that they still have a pretty decent amount of basically everything. And obviously we're going to have to move the siege tower to the walls again. But I think we have a much greater chance of being successful now that we've eliminated that first wave, but obviously we're going to be, we're going to have to face more marksmen now, but we'll have to do that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.